So we're going to look at creating a matching game where you match you're trying to find pairs of pictures you know and you have these tiles that are covered and you click the tile gets uncovered and then a picture is displayed and you're trying to find the matching picture so basically um, here is the game uh, you pick for example strawberries you pick the next one I did uh, let me remove the shuffling so that we can show the game so basically of course these are randomized I don't want to go in and randomize everything so here it is and then the answer is here you know just um, it's a four by four board I, of course the real game has it randomized but I just in order to know I don't want to waste time trying to find them I know that this is the is the answer to this one but if I do this you see and it disappears you do this it disappears and so on and you could see here the match count is showing up and similarly the the uh, banana and now if you click on the banana or click on the um, on the watermelon nothing happens because these are already matched and then if you click while it's while it's being displayed nothing happens all right here we are and you see the counter and then once it reaches eight matches the game is completed you click on reset it gives you another game of course here i did remove the shuffling part so we look at the code and we write the code ourselves and show you what assumptions I made and so on right here it is now it's shuffled uh, uh, it seems that all right now it's shuffled all right so I know that this is a leaf and this is a leaf this is when you enable shuffling all right so now let's see how to build an app like this okay close this close this stop the task and let's create I have the uh, I have the assets here that the assets and we go in create a new application app let's say here we call it the matching game matching game and I'm going to store it on the desktop there it is matching game create that okay good maximize something so basically I need these assets so I'll go to the asset here and I am going to uh, just drag and drop and here are all the assets all right so you see here I have uh, card one all the way to card eight these are eight pictures and then you have the the uh, the the unflipped tile right okay so I have that in the main I would like to uh, I'm not gonna worry about scrolling so what I'm gonna do is the problem is that you can't click on images so we need to click on buttons so I'm gonna take a button here it is and what I'm going to do is I am going to take uh, a button and I'm going to set up its constraint such that the aspect ratio, I just pick the aspect ratio constraint and I go back here and I set up the aspect ratio to be one to one, one to one, okay, one to one, okay. So that's the aspect ratio of the button, right? So here it is. I know it doesn't look that fancy, but we'll see and what i'm going to do is i am going to set up the background to be custom for the button and you see here there is a background image because you see it has an image but if you set the image of the button it doesn't scale here it takes it doesn't scale with the the, the the button but if you set the image to the background image it does scale here it is see here we'll fix all of that but uh, this is one and i'm not going to do that i'm going to uh, show it as a cover tile and, and I'm going to remove the text here it is I know it doesn't look that fancy and we'll fix that the ratio is one to one perfect here it is we have four buttons one two and three so I'm going to have a row is one two and three and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select them and then I'm gonna pick this and I'm gonna say stack view there it is okay we, we're gonna look at it in a little bit now we have a stack view there is a label at the top uh, to say this is the matching game here's the label we'll set up its constraints in a little bit we can do something like this and like this I'll get back to that label go back to the stack view all right and it's a it's a horizontal stack view right so here it's a horizontal stack view spacing is eight let's set up some constraints for it let's set up the constraints for this guy first the label all right here is one two three here is the label and then we take this select the stack view and set up its constraint one two and three and make it 16 
16 and 16 add the constraint and you see here it takes care of it takes care because i added the constraint to make it one to one the uh, the stack view stretches and it makes each one of them the same size all right perfect now let's look at the constraints that are there there's one constraint it seems that it doubles these constraints let's delete the extra ones i don't need it it doesn't hurt but why should i have extra constraints here it is and also in the stack view you can control the spacing so if you go here and you can make the spacing 16 boom and here it is okay so i have a stack view you have the label let's make it a little bit bigger one two three 21 and make it centered there it is and basically we could say that this is the matching game all right here it is matching game all right so we have a stack view let's copy that paste it and we'll do the same thing i'm going to set up some constraints there's one there's two and here is three and basically this guy the stack view make sure to pick the stack view and i would like uh, the stack view i will go from here to here and make it uh, uh, the top and go from here to here the leading from here to here the training trailing here it is and similarly let's delete this one right, so here is this one's bye bye and this one also is bye bye so we go back here and uh, i am going to update the frames because there is a misplacement it seems all right i'm going to delete it here we are copy that stack view again okay here is one here is two and here is three and we can take that stack view and just go here leading and trailing and uh vertical spacing here we are good oops control z another stack view uh we need to probably to move things around so i'm gonna move this guy down a little bit and then we pick this stack view move it down a little bit all right here it is make it okay leading and trailing okay similarly leading and trailing okay and then this one and this one the uh, let's say vertical spacing it, it does the shifting so that's what's causing the problem and uh, vertical spacing where's vertical spacing here vertical spacing okay now we can fix these constraints so this one this one we go back here you see it has a 90 we don't want the 90 we make it 16 there it is and then similarly that stack view you see there is a little bit of a bottom spacing here go to this one and the bottom spacing is 16. okay and now if we go back here and we click here update the frame similarly this one update the frame perfect so we have them done and they have image views they have buttons inside them right <coughs> and then we have this matching label and when we copy that paste it again and then under that oops um, okay let's see i'll add a label okay here we are and then also add a button maybe a filled button okay here we are and one and two i can add the constraints also through this i'll make it 16 16 16 here we are and then similarly the button is one and two we do the same thing 16 16 16 and here is our button all right perfect so this is we'll do this one is the reset game and this is the game status we'll center it center the text there we are now if we run it 
what we'll do is that once we run it it will show it should show the here we are it should show the game we'll set up handlers now event handlers and go from there okay okay here we are and here it should show the uh, the tiles here it is okay cool so now what i'm going to do is let's uh click here and do use the assistant i'm not going to create a handler for each single one right so what i want to do is have one handler that i will use so this is the reset game clicked right and then this one is the tile clicked so here it is tile clicked all right and we know that the sender is a button uh, no it's a let's keep it we'll look at it in a little bit right so we'll see how we can change it and so on so now this is this one right i can also drag it and drop it here and it becomes for both of them you see now it's both of them here it is and here it is so whenever you click on a button this function is going to get called all right cool here it is here it is okay and all i'm doing is just clicking and dragging you know here it is click and drag click and drag and click and drag so now let's print here and say uh tile clicked all right i know what you're thinking how do i know which tile was clicked and i will we'll discuss that in detail because this is crucial to the success of this approach so here it is you see tile clicked tile clicked tile clicked they are all the same right okay how do i differentiate these tiles we will use a small trick so if you look here if you click on a tile these are all the properties there is at the bottom of the screen something called a tag so what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide tags to these tiles I'll start from 100, far away from 0, because 0 is the default one, this is 100. If you go to the next one, it's going to be 101, all right, and so on. And this one is going to be 102. Give it a unique tag ID, okay? And then I will use that tag. It will come with the, wh when you click on the button, it will come with the layout. So basically, uh, uh, we, we will look at it. I'll show you that how will I retrieve this tag, okay? So this is 105, 104, 105 and so on right so this is 106 107 and so on so i'm changing the tag okay now the idea is that i will be able to retrieve that tag uh, when you click and from there i can figure out which button you clicked and go from there and then associate data to that tag and so on right all right so this is 10 and this one is going to be 11 there it is and then this is 12 and then this is 13 and so on this is 14 and then this one is 15 okay you can look at them here is 15 14 13 12 just to make sure then 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 one and 100 so it starts from 100 okay cool so now how do i get the tag so if i go back here you see there is a sender and it says any so i know that this any is a button right these are buttons if you go back here these are buttons right so if you click on one of them click here this is a ui button you see okay cool so now what i could do is i could do let the button okay equals button clicked equal um the button clicked equals the sender as exclamation mark because I, I want it, to, it 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 might be any it might be nil so as UI button all right here we are and then basically what I would like to do is I would like to print the tile the 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 tag so then let the tag equal to the button clicked dot tag you see here here's the value I print that and I'm gonna print the tag now look at what the tag is the tag is an integer you see here it's an integer see that it's coming back as an integer i can even force it to be an integer here but it will automatically detect that it's an integer here it is it's an integer so now let's run it to show you that when you click the button any one of them the same function there is tag 100 101 and so on two three four five and so on 
right and then the last one is here 14 15 16 blah 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 you have 16 tiles all right cool so you have the tiles now so i'm i'm able now to have a click handler that manages all of them and i it gives me a unique id so i'll use that id to distinguish data or associate data with the tile right each tile and then use that to uh, to uh, provide the game logic <clears throat> so now what i also want to do is i'd like to get the assets here you know these assets the cards and so on so let me copy that so I i'll create an array of these assets right so basically let the, the asset names card names okay equal and uh, it's a string array okay so it's a string array equals here it is string comma string comma string and uh, these are the names okay here it is these are the names of the resources card one right so uh, this is the name of it card one card two card three and so on i'm just going to type it now four five six seven eight here it is card one card two card three card four card five six seven and eight these are the cards right i need that to do the shuffling and so on right okay so i have the cards good <coughs> right and then also i have the cards <coughs> And then, so I have these cards. So now let's do build a, an, uh, a method that's called setup game uh, function. Here is function. And here it is. It's called uh, setup game, right? Okay. So these are what I will do is I'll create a string array, <coughs> and that string array is going to have the shuffled. So var shuffled card names okay equals this is the image card names right equal to a string array okay here it is and we can do shuffled shuffled names dot append contents of card names here it is so i have that and then append it again because this has this has eight cards right these are the eight images i will add two of them right and then i could do shuffle names equal shuffle names dot shuffle shuffled you see it returns an element in a sequence shuffled all right cool so now this returns now it's shuffled okay cool so now i have shuffled the the cards so basically card one <coughs> is this image see here card one is this image card two is this image and so on right so that's the image name i can use that to retrieve the image and so on right so now what i would like to do is i would like to loop over these cards and initialize the image views right so now in order to initialize these image views or these um, these buttons right so these buttons i'd like to initialize them such that i can associate uh, first of all i'd like to make them all uh, tiled like this like the the tile is covered and then also i would like to store information so basically about what's the status of each tile right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class, a uh, new file. I'll call it card information, card info. Right here it is. It's a Swift class. Right here it is, mm -hmm. card info. And I'm going to create a class, a class, card info. And it has a couple of things, an integer, which is the uh, let, uh, this is, or oh, sorry, this is a let, this is going to be the, uh, the tag, okay as an integer and also i would like to get the um, a uh, the image so I let the uh, image name or the card name which is a string right <coughs> the card name is the image that is sitting under the card okay now also i would like to get some information about the status var which is uh, these are never going to change once initialized so that's why i'm not going to declare them as var but var here i need two things i need to to keep track is this card flipped meaning it's the tile has been uh, turned on the other side and you're able to see the image so basically i could say is flipped and then this starts off as false right okay and var is matched is it a matched one because if it's matched i don't care about that that anymore right here it is and i create an initializer here it is <coughs> and i'm not gonna use these initializers i don't need uh, flipped and so on i already initialized them as false in both cases and i have these initializers <coughs> all right good so that's all what i am going to store all right so now how i'm going to store this i will create uh, a map 
and that's going to be called the cards cards map or map or the tiles map tiles map <coughs> and it is equal to a map of integer which is going to be the tag and then a card info is going to be the value all right here it is this is the tiles map and basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to say tiles map dot clear all right or remove all just clear it to start with and then now i would like to loop over for uh, i in it goes from zero all the way to 15 right this is all the uh, the shuffled names right so basically these are the names or whatever right okay now i know i can get the tag you remember i started the tags as well at 100 and went all the way to 115 so i could do uh, let tag equals 100 plus i right so that's my tag and i can declare uh, initialize it as integer here it is okay here is my tag so i have the tag i also can get the image right so the image is from the uh, let then the image or the card name card name i can get it from the shuffled names dot and then you get it at i <coughs> so now i have the card name all right perfect so i have the tag and the card name now let me get the <coughs> the uh i can store it now right so basically i can create let card info equals card info and i can add the tag here is the tag and the card name all right so that's a card now i'd like to add it into the map so tiles map dot uh, tiles map of tag equals card info so now I added the, the, the tag into the I added this card info into the tile map using the using the tag. Right? Okay, cool. So now we're good here. Now I would like to also the image view, get the image view. So how do I get the image view using the tag? So basically I can do it like this or the button. So let the button equals uh, get see here uh, view, which is the main view of the screen uh by tag you see here view by tag it returns to you a ui view all right perfect what's the tag it's the tag there it is as and we'll i say ui button right so that's the button right using the tag okay we specified these tags and now the tricky part the tricky part you can do some research about it but uh we want to change the background uh, image to be the tile image right so that's something we we did in the storyboard but I'm going to also do it here. So if you look at the storyboard, so you look back at the storyboard, you see that what we changed was uh, the background configuration, right? We need the background configuration. And then under the background configuration, there is an image, right? That's what we need to change. So if we go back here. If you look at the button, okay, here is the button. Configuration dot background, right? And then you see here back, uh, the configuration. All right dot background so basically if you look at button again dot configuration button again button dot configuration dot background you see here the background mm -hmm. and then under it dot image equals ui image so this is a ui image you see named using the name of the image and which is the card name all right card name if you remember these are the names card one card two which are these names right and what we did is we took these card names right and we shuffled them we put them into this array this array list or this array we inserted them twice because you have to match pairs and then we shuffled them and then basically that is the card name that we're looking at right so now this sets up the card name mm -hmm. and we're good to go so basically we are halfway there i think we're very close right so here we are okay cool so now this is setup game so that's when we copy this and i'm going to paste it here to show you what i'm trying to do here i'm going to comment out this a little bit here okay this shows you the card name which is not the correct answer right we need to basically not have the card name we need to set it up to the tile basically which is this one we all the images start off as covered right so this is covered tile right so if we go here we need to set it up to cover tile but to show you what i'm trying to do here i'll comment it out I run this code and basically we are going to show all the images i'm not going to hide them so we run this <coughs> here it is you see how all the images are being shown 
right now if you reset game basically a reset game we're gonna call this setup game again setup game again and run it again go back here see reset game gives you another distribution right all right so that's basically what we're doing is that's basically we are shuffling them and then assigning the image there right but i'm not going to show the image like this we want it we want this the images to be hidden we want it to be hidden as the game starts you know otherwise this game is useless there we are everything is hidden but we know what image it is you see the card name is stored on inside card info and card info is added into the map using the tag you see the tag is the key the value is the card info okay cool so now once you click on a once you click on a button now let's write the uh, do the game once you click on a button what we could do is we need to bring in the card info right so now i have the tag here see this is how we got the tag from the button the dot tag gets you the button gets you the tag of a button now i can get the card info i could do see once you use maps you need to take care of checking for nils right so basically i could do if let card info equals um and we had it here which is the tile map tile map of tag right so this one is similar to checking to see if it's nil or no okay so this takes care of if it's nil else you can do something else right so now here we are sure it's not nil it's you're gonna get something right okay cool so now we have the card info mm -hmm. you can write this in a little bit different way but i'm getting data from the map right here it is we have which is card info and then once you have the card info you can check things i want to make sure that the card that they picked they clicked on has not matched with any other card before and is not up is not flipped meaning it's not visible right so if it's visible if you click on a visible card nothing should happen right so how do i do that if card info dot is matched so basically i know and to know it's not matched and it's not a and is not card info dot is not flipped right then we can continue otherwise we just ignore it right all right so now if that's the case then what we need to do is to figure out is it the first card or the second card that was picked you know you pick two cards pick the first one and then you pick the second one in order to do that we have to declare var card info one as card info question mark so this is as a card info so basically we come in here and check to see is there a card info so basically we can go here and say if self dot card info one is equal to nil this means that the card that you clicked on right now is is uh, the first card right otherwise then there is has been a, a card previously selected so this is the previously selected card right we can call it previously selected card info and yeah, just if this makes it easier all right so here if it's equal to nil then we do card info card info one we can do self dot card info one if it makes it easier for you card info one equals card info okay and now what we want to do is to display the card right so basically and then we do card info dot flipped equal true and meaning we flipped it and then basically we want to do something like this uh, we take the button we already have the button here it is the button clicked configuration background image and then this is card info dot card name right so basically we are going to display the image so now if we are here at any given time whenever you click and it's you land here this means you need to show the card so basically this always has to happen if it's the first click or the second click right so basically i'm going to copy this or cut this from here and put it here that's what we're doing is that we're changing it into flipped state and then we're displaying the image all right good so now we're doing that and then uh, basically we are done for this case we are done right else this means that it's not the first choice it's the second one right so basically it's the second choice so in that case what we want to do is to check to see if it's the second choice um then we need to um check to see if they're equal how do i check to see if they're equal this means that they have the same image right they have the same card name so we'll check to see if self dot card info one dot um card name is equal to so now i can and do something like this I, I know it's not null right uh is not is equal to card info 
dot card name. This means it's a match, right? Else, it's not a match, right? So now, if it's a match, what do I have to do? Is then I have to change them to both matching, right? So card info dot match equal true. Card info one dot matched equal true. Okay, so now they're both matched, right? And uh, yeah, they're matched. That's it. So basically, they are matched. I don't have to switch anything, and it's good to go, right? Now, if they don't match, I have to uh, reverse the cards, meaning I have to um, uh, turn the cards, right? So basically, or I can call it uh, turn the cards or flip the cards, whatever you want to call it here. But I need a method to, because I'm going to do it to both of them. I have two cards that are, or cover the card, for example. Okay, so I can do a function cover card. And in order to cover the card, I'll just send you a card info. All right, card info, card info. You know, I put an underscore here so that I can, don't have to type card info. I'll show you. And it returns nothing. All right. So now basically what I'm going to do is I know that at the end of the day, I need to bring in the card, right? So basically card info, I need to, from card info, I need to find out. So here I need to get the button. Okay. And I'm going to get the button using card info dot tag. Right here it is. So I got, I got the button. And then I set up the button to be, uh, to be a tile, to display the tile, right? And then I'll do the button dot... Uh, sorry, the card info. Card info dot um, is flipped to false, and that becomes the card. The card covered, right? So basically, what I'm doing here is three things, right? So I am um, setting it to false, dis displaying, getting the card, getting the button, and I'm using the same approach I used here: cover and then flipped equal to false because now it's going to go the other way. So now here, what I'm going to do. <clears throat> oh no, we missed something. So basically, after they match and you set up this, we need card info one to be equal to nil because you are done using it, right? So basically, you are done using it so that then you give a chance to reset the, the process, right? All right, so now <clears throat> here, what we want to do is swap the, co the uh, uh, cover the cards, cover, cover card. You see here, I don't have to give the name. Uh, so basically, card info, there it is, see? Because of the underscore, you see underscore space. If I remove this underscore space, it's not going to be happy. And then basically, uh, you will see. So when I do card info, uh, cover card, sorry. When I do a cover card, cover card, you see it will show the name here. And it just looks a little bit repetitive. But if you put an underscore before it, an underscore space, now you don't have to put the name. I want to do it for card, card info and I want to do it also for card info one exclamation mark. You have to unwrap it because it can, it's, it's optional, right? So here it's optional. All right. And then basically we have to do the same thing. Card info one is nil and we're good to go. Okay. So that's if it doesn't match, right? And that's if it matches, right? And we're good. I think we can try it and see what it looks like <coughs> here it is you pick one and two now in order just to control the the shuffling i'll comment out shuffle okay and then if you run it you will see the cases okay here it is here is one and i click here i know it doesn't match because the matching one is this one this one is the matching one click here and it disappears immediately we have to look into how to delay but anyway here it matches if you click on the matches nothing happen you see here it matches if you keep on clicking nothing happens because these we changed its status to match equal to true you see here once it matches we make my match equal to true so it doesn't pass the check at the here because it matches so it this is not matched so if it's false we want match to be false okay cool so now similarly here this is the watermelon here it is the game is working okay now what I want to do is that when it doesn't match I want a little bit of a delay you know because you see if you reset the game I go here and here it just goes very quickly I don't see the other tile you know 
So in order to do that, we will use something that is um, called the uh, dispatcher, right? So basically a dispatcher is, uh, and in, in, uh, in iOS, they used to call it Grand Central. It's a dispatcher. So basically you can dispatch some code, a block of code to execute, all right? So it's very straightforward. So when do I want to do that is when they don't match here, right? So I want to execute this after some time. <coughs> this code, I want to execute it after some time. In order to do that, we will... <coughs> We will do this. It's called dispatch queue. A dispatch dispatch queue dot the main queue, which is the main thread, uh, because we are looking at the UI and then async after. You see that after uh, deadline. The deadline is uh, dot now, okay, uh, plus one. This is one second, and then execute. What I will do is I'll press enter, okay. Or what I could do is, uh, let's see, dispatch after, async after. And what I could do is, usually it lets you do it. I don't know why it's not letting me, but let me copy this from here. Dot, let's do it again. Async after, deadline and execute. Here it is. Oh, here it is. That's the execute I want. Here it is. It's going to execute this block of code after the, the deadline. And here is the deadline. All right, so what I want to execute is this. Okay, here it is. And it's going to wait one second uh, before it executes it. Okay, so now it's not happy because now this is a block of code. What you want to do is whenever you refer to functions that are inside this class, you have to do self dot. Okay, because it needs the scope to figure out the scope here. So self dot, self dot, and so on. Right, so these are all variables in the scope. Okay, now run this again. No, oh, here it is, self dot again run it again here we are now they don't match you see it stays a little bit and then displays now you see i can also click on <laughs> see i'm i can click they they will disappear right now if they match it will match no problems but if they are not the same it will disappear after some time the problem is that if you keep on clicking you see the user can keep on clicking it the app will crash because the app doesn't take care of the situation where the user keeps on clicking so we want to avoid the user from actually clicking while the until the dispatcher executes this this code in order to do that set forward also we can do var is waiting have a, a boolean variable okay is waiting equal false right and then we can block the whole clicking here you could say for example if not waiting okay if it's not waiting then execute so basically all of this code we can execute right so now what sets waiting is before you go into to schedule a job we could do is waiting self dot is waiting equal to true now we made it true right and then when you are done executing we can make it false again all right so this makes sure that this block of code yani yeah, this code will not execute if waiting is equal to true right okay so run this <coughs> okay here's one two one two three you see I i'm clicking nothing happens actually i'm clicking but nothing is happening see i'm clicking while they are being displayed nothing happens because of the waiting aspect i can do the same thing with waiting with regard to resetting the game so i could do check to see if not waiting right then you can set up game i can do the same thing here to avoid clicking the button while you are uh, waiting for the dispatcher right Okay, so we are technically done here. Uh, what we want to do is to display the game status right here. So the game status shows you the count of the matches. So in order to do that, I need a var. We call it match count. <coughs> match count, and we start with zero. And I have to make sure that I set the match count also to to zero when I am setting up. Right. So here we are. Match count is zero. Okay. <coughs> So now uh, what I need to do is, you see here, I have I have the main here. This guy, is it connected to anything? <coughs> or this guy, sorry, is it connected to anything? Yes, I need to connect it to this, to this, to my code. Close this, go here, assistant. Interesting. Okay, so sometimes it doesn't work so let's go back again to the main and no assistant result why 
um, go here is view controller okay view controller view view controller sometimes it's not uh, oops sometimes you have to close open again uh, it's already associated so it should show the assistant but anyhow so what I could do is I'll close it and open it again just so that stop the tasks and I'll open it again okay interesting here it is <coughs> okay here it is now it shows it I didn't do anything I just restarted the game but anyway it's starting the IDE uh, Xcode so here is the outlet I just need an outlet here I call for example game status label here it is and what i'm doing here is that i have the game status label now right so i go back here and what i'm going to do is here i'm going to say um here when the game starts self dot game status label dot text equals match count self dot match count all right so that's what i'm going to do here right and then where else do i do that i'm going to do that here when there's a match right i need to bump up the when there's a match i need to bump up this match count sorry uh, self dot match count equals self dot match count plus one so i bumped it up and then i can display it right <coughs> and then that's it that's the only case you know when and then here also i need to check to see if match count self dot match count uh, is equal to eight right because this means you have matched eight then i could do i could say game completed right in that case i could say game completed mm -hmm. let's run this again here we are is the game and let's play the game so basically i i remove the shuffle so that i can control the uh, the matches so here's match one these don't match disappear here it is takes one second to disappear here we are here we are here you see here these don't match boom i know it's not shuffled but i need to do that so that i can do this video in a short amount of time <coughs> here it is and game completed reset the game match count to zero and you can see that i am playing the game all right so in this assignment you looked at how to set up these event handlers how to use images uh, how to uh, dispatch how to do so many things you know and also how to use tags which is the main idea here all right so please let me know if you have any questions thank you